this project was huge. Gargantuan. One might even say it was a behemoth. Yes, I was legally required to start off this video with a bad joke. Sorry, not sorry. Let's start this the way all chonky things start. A wire armature and a bunch of tinfoil. If I did all this in clay, it would be really thick and heavy. I did a couple rough sketches to get the basic armature in order. I picked an action pose, so I wanted to make sure I was getting the proportions right, as well as the spine squiggle for his stomp mode. Needless to say, I'm really excited about Horizon Zero Dawn Forbidden West. I've actively been avoiding watching trailers because it hurts that I can't have it yet, but it was an excellent opportunity to replay the game. I love all the machines in this game, and for some reason, I thought that this was going to be an easier machine. I'm not sure why I thought that. I was definitely wrong. Quick warning, a whole lot of this video is going to be me sculpting. I usually create things that are more organic, so it's going to be a challenge for me to get things perfect and most importantly, symmetrical. I picked an action pose for the behemoth, so he's not going to be perfectly symmetrical, so that should help. I've been collecting a lot of screenshots of him and looking at some 3D models that other fans have made. I'll put the links in the description below. It was really helpful to look at it from a ton of different angles. So here we are, he's finally chunky enough to build on, and we can start on his neck tubes. When I started on these, I hadn't really looked at him with a critical eye, so I was just making tubes every which way. I'll finally figure it out later that these follow the same general lines as muscle fibers. It's okay, he still looks cool. Okay, more neck tubes. I wasn't 100% satisfied with the way the tubes looked when I just carved them in, even when I tried to round the edges, so we're just gonna add snakes. I left some just carved for a little contrast, like they were an underlayer. It's not totally accurate to the game, but it ends up looking really cool in the end after it's all painted. I squish the ends into the body so it looks more like it's disappearing into the body instead of just ending. Let's skip ahead many, many snakes and many, many hours and move on to some fiddly bits, like the force loaders that they use to lift rocks and throw them at you. Unfortunately, all my footage from this was terribly out of focus and my hands were in the way. There are six of these, so I made one and made a mold. 
I wasn't sure how successful the mold would be since I only had the two-part putty and it might not perfectly fit the mold. It kind of worked though. There's just some cleanup to do, but it's much easier than re-sculpting it every single time. This process was long enough already. After working on the tummy tub a little and even more tubes, I realized his head wasn't really ginormous enough, so he got a little bit of a lobotomy. It was around this time that I realized I was going to drive myself crazy with tubes, so I made two tube mold plates. That way, I only had to make many, many tubes a couple of times. With the tube molds, I could just add sheets of tubes, cut them to size, and blend them in so they looked like they were going under each other. It was finally a good time for the first bake. It was now that I noticed I may have a small problem, or a big problem. The big problem is my behemoth. The small problem is my oven. I had to get really creative with his positioning as he got bigger so he didn't get too close to the heating elements and burn. On to the face. I didn't make templates for this because I knew I'd have variable thicknesses, so I just smooshed clay onto his face and smoothed it to the right angle, then drew and cut directly on the face. This way, his face plates were in place and I didn't have to risk deforming them to get them on. Nice, clean lines, perfect thicknesses, feels good. I baked and repeated this process a few times, and I think his face came out pretty okay. This was a weird part. I wanted to make his mouth grinders, but I knew I wouldn't be able to get quite as tiny and detailed as I would need it to be to be true to the original design, but without a 3D printer, I was really gonna have to work hard. I ended up having to pour liquid Sculpey onto all this to make sure the toothy bits stayed in place. I made two large ones and two small ones. By the way, this was the large one. Also, to get these screenshots, I got way too close for comfort. There is a lot of armor, so much more than it looked like. Let's speed through this a bit. There, we have his side armor on, and his tummy tub. Look at those chunky thighs. Toe bean time! He has these cute little toe plates, see? They're kind of more splayed out in this picture because he's been decommissioned by my bow. I made a left and a right toe and molded them to save a bit of time and to make sure they were all identical.
Okay, time for his tush armor. You have no idea how many times I made a junk in his trunk joke while doing this. Check out how messy my desk gets. I always try to clean up as much as I can, but I use so many tools and keep thinking, oh, I'll, I'll just need that in a second. I won't put it back in the jar that's three inches away. And then it ends up like this. I spent some time on the legs too. This was definitely tricky because of the angle. I wish I could just bend my tools so they'd fit whatever angle I needed. Anyway, that's enough of that bad angle. Moving on. This was more fun. I found an amazing fan art by Yuri Vorobyev on ArtStation that was an amazing, amazing reference image. These were the cool leg plates that I just couldn't resist doing. Okay, we're here now. He has more thigh armor, freeze canisters are on, and glowing, and his face is face-like. Check, check, check. Are we there yet? No. Antenna. Back. Thingies. Sparker slash power cell. Trauma. At last. And we're here! After so many months, we're here! Please enjoy these mid-project glamour shots. I'm really pleased with how it turned out. There were so many details! I don't know why I looked at this machine and thought, yes, this looks like a fairly simple one. I can't say this enough, this game is just incredible. I love it. Totally not sponsored, just a raving fan. I'm already planning some vacation days for when Forbidden West comes out. The care and detail put into the art for this game still mesmerizes me. I hope I did it justice. Okay, time to paint. Let's start with priming in black. I did a few layers of very, very watered down black so that it wouldn't fill in the tiny textures. I thought that I would try a technique I saw from Kami Cosplay where you put down a base of metallic paint, then use hairspray, then paint on top of that. The hairspray is supposed to help you chip the paint off and then it looks really beaten and weathered. It actually was not successful, but I learned something that worked eventually. It took a few coats of white to make this opaque. And here's where the scraping went off the rails. The hairspray didn't help, and when I scraped, it went all the way down to the clay. I decided to move on to his colorful bits while I watched some Warhammer painting videos to learn some weathering techniques. I must have watched like 30. Look how close I can get with my camera! I actually got a GoPro recently so that I'm not just using my phone. Sometimes I use my phone, but it heats up really really quickly so I was looking for an alternative that wouldn't burn me the next time I checked my phone.
I held my breath the whole time. Does anyone else watch movies with underwater scenes and try to hold their breath when the characters do? You can do that here for a fun interactive experience! I actually bought this pen specifically for this, instead of buying a smaller brush like I keep saying I will. Good job me! Let's just montage some colors, shall we? While we're still painting, let's chat a little about this project. You might have noticed he's rearing up on his hind feet, and I've left some long wires. I'm going to be making a base for him. I debated a lot over what we'd do. Originally, I was just going to recreate the landscape where I took the game shots. Then I thought, well, shouldn't he have a story? He could be the behemoth from the sun ring. But he can't, because the one we see in the sun ring is corrupted. But then I thought, the Sun Ring has been around a lot longer than the Corruptors. He could be a behemoth from Jaron's time. Jaron loved behemoths. He loved to toss people in there and watch them get trampled. It's perfect. So I started taking screenshots of the Sun Ring from the game. Eh, wrong. I forgot for a moment that that's the wrong Sun Ring. I should be looking at the one in Meridian. It had a really gorgeous floor, but I changed my mind yet again and decided I needed dirt. I just felt weird making boulders come out of a tiled floor. After a long conversation, me, myself, and I agreed that we should do a dirt base on top of a fancy base, so more like a figurine instead of part of a diorama. And then I realized he's way too clean to be in the sun ring. He's fresh out of a cauldron. So let's get to messing up his paint job, shall we? I found a great tutorial from Artis Opus on how to make him chippy, since the whole hairspray thing didn't work. Link in the description again. Please watch his video for a better explanation, but it's basically a lot of dotting in strategic places like edges. I mixed up a silver plus bronze mix for this first layer. The second layer is a lot like the first layer, but with tiny dots of bright silver instead. I think it turned out pretty well, honestly. I could do with a little more practice, but I'll definitely be using this technique again. So a little continuity error here, but I made a paper clay base and smothered it in brownish muck. I also made little paper boulder lollipops. And a little bit of a test fit here. Looking good! I'm excited to get the boulders on so he can do his stomp. dry brushing in various shades of browns and grays. What a cool rock. I'm happy with the striations. Can you tell that I'm getting a little done with painting? Thank goodness dry brushing is so forgiving. Ta-da! Lots of texture, the rock lollipops are in place. It's time to work on the rest of the base. 
I remembered this perfect quote from Helis that I thought would be great for this base. Mighty is the behemoth in the eye of the sun. I wasn't really happy with the rock lollipop sticks showing, so I thought I'd make some dust. I read that you should use polyfill for this, but all I had was cotton balls, so I gave those a good soak, which really didn't color them at all, and then I struggled with some dry brushing color instead, I ripped them up, and I glued them on around the rocks. I was trying to make it look like dust clouds. It could be better, but I tried my best. I also made some little lightning bolts out of UV resin and this cool glow-in-the-dark paint I got to do his glowy bits. I pushed these into the dust as well to make it look like his rock throwing attack. It's super cool looking in the dark. Let's just pop the behemoth in place and... Are we... done? Thank you all so much for sticking with me all the way to the end. This was a long one. Don't worry, I'm not going to make all the behemoth jokes about it being big or gargantuan again. I really hope you enjoyed watching this as much as I loved making this. This was my biggest sculpt ever, and I really learned a lot. If you like my work, please consider subscribing to my channel. I've got a lot more things I want to try, and I can't wait to share them with you. Also, leave me a comment if you're excited about the Forbidden West. The wait is almost over! Thanks again for coming by, and I'll see you in the next one!